I was 12 years old, living in a quiet suburban neighborhood with my parents and my older sister, who was 17. It was the middle of winter, and my sister and I were home alone on a Saturday evening while my parents attended a family friend's wedding a couple of hours away. They had asked if we wanted to come, but I was feeling a bit under the weather, and my sister had a lot of schoolwork, so we decided to stay home. It was snowing outside and the wind was howling, making the house feel even more isolated. My sister was in her room, studying, and I was downstairs in the living room, playing on my Nintendo Switch. Around 9 p.m., the power flickered for a moment, but then stayed on, so I didn't think much of it. I remember feeling a little uneasy, but I brushed it off as just being home alone during a storm. After another hour, the power went out completely, leaving the house in darkness. I called out to my sister and she came downstairs with her phone flashlight. We decided to gather some candles and flashlights from the kitchen drawers. As we were lighting the candles, we heard a noise from the basement. A loud clattering sound, like something had fallen over. We both froze and exchanged worried looks. She tried to reassure me, saying it was probably just something that tipped over because of the wind outside. I wanted to believe her, but the noise was too distinct like something metallic hitting the floor. She went back upstairs to grab her laptop, hoping to use it for some light, while I stayed in the kitchen, holding a candle and trying to keep calm. I heard a low thump from the basement again, and this time I knew it wasn't just the wind. I called my sister back down, and we both stood at the top of the basement stairs, listening. It was pitch black down there, and we couldn't see anything. My sister was braver than me, so she decided to take her phone and go halfway down the stairs to check it out, leaving me at the top. I watched nervously as she shined the light around, but the beam wasn't strong enough to see far. She muttered something about the fuse box, thinking it might have been affected by the storm. But then, she suddenly stopped talking. She turned around, her face pale, and motioned for me to go back. I whispered, asking what was wrong, but she just kept waving for me to go upstairs, I backed away and she quickly followed, closing the basement door behind her. She whispered to me that she saw someone standing in the far corner of the basement. At first I thought she was joking, but the fear in her eyes told me otherwise. We quietly ran up to her room and locked the door, not knowing what to do. We didn't have any landlines and our phones had barely any battery left. My sister told me to stay quiet while she tried to call our parents, but the call kept failing. We could hear faint noises from downstairs like someone moving around, opening drawers and shuffling through things. We knew someone was in the house and we were trapped upstairs. Suddenly we heard footsteps coming up the basement stairs and then the sound of the basement door opening. My sister and I huddled together in the dark, trying to be as silent as possible. We heard heavy footsteps moving around the house, getting closer to the stairs leading up to the bedrooms. She turned off her phone flashlight and we sat there in total darkness, barely breathing. The footsteps stopped at the bottom of the stairs and we could hear someone slowly making their way up one step at a time. My sister held my hand tightly as we listened, terrified. We heard our parents' bedroom door open, then mine, and then finally the footsteps came right outside her door. The door handle jiggled slightly and we both froze. It felt like forever, but eventually the person moved away and the house went quiet again. We stayed hidden in her room for what felt like hours, not daring to move. Finally, around 2 a.m., we heard the sound of the front door closing. We waited even longer just to be sure, before sneaking out and checking the house. When we went downstairs, the basement door was wide open. Drawers in the kitchen were pulled out, and the back door was slightly ajar, letting in the cold winter air. The intruder had left, but the fear of that night stuck with us. We found out later that the power outage wasn't due to the storm. The wires had been cut. We never knew who was in our house that night or what they were looking for, but it made us realize how vulnerable we were. Even now, I can't walk by the basement without feeling a chill, and I always double-check that the doors are locked before going to bed. The thought of that person standing in the dark basement, just watching, still haunts me. I was 16 years old and it was the middle of summer break. My parents were away on a weekend trip, leaving me home alone for a couple of nights. I was used to being by myself and honestly, I enjoyed the independence. My parents left early that morning and I spent most of the day lounging around, watching TV and texting friends. 
I had planned to hang out with some of them later, but everyone's plans fell through, so I ended up alone that night. It was a hot night, so I decided to keep the windows open to let some air in while I watched TV in the living room. Around 10 p.m., I got bored and decided to take a quick shower before bed. I was in the bathroom with the water running when I heard a faint thump coming from somewhere in the house. I paused listening closely, but didn't hear anything else, so I brushed it off as nothing. After my shower, I went back to the living room and noticed the side gate leading to the backyard was slightly open. That was odd because I was sure it was closed earlier. I went outside, shut the gate and locked it, thinking maybe it was just the wind. As I walked back inside, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. I made sure to check all the doors and windows, just in case. I went back to watching TV, but my nerves were on edge. About 30 minutes later, I heard another noise. This time, it was a light tapping sound coming from the kitchen. I muted the TV and listened closely. The sound stopped, but then I heard it again, like something lightly tapping against the window. I got up, walked to the kitchen, and looked out the window that faced the backyard. There was nothing there. I was starting to feel anxious, so I went back to the living room, keeping the TV muted. I texted a friend, joking about how I was starting to freak myself out, and she just laughed, telling me I was paranoid. But then, as I was typing a reply, I heard another sound, this time the distinct creak of the side gate opening again. My heart was racing now. I quietly got up and peeked through the blinds. The gate was wide open, and I could see a shadow moving along the side of the house. I ducked down, trying not to be seen, and crawled back toward the hallway. I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to make a noise and draw attention, but I also couldn't just sit there. I grabbed my phone and slowly made my way to my parents' room, which had a better view of the backyard. I peeked out from behind the curtain and saw a man standing at the edge of the yard, just looking up at the house. He wasn't moving, just standing there like he was waiting for something. I didn't recognize him. He looked like he was in his 40s, wearing dark clothes and a baseball cap. I was terrified, but I knew I had to keep calm. I grabbed my phone and started typing a text to my dad, trying to explain what was happening without making any noise. As I typed, I watched the man move closer to the house. He walked along the side, stopping near the living room window, and stood there staring inside. I moved away from the window, my hands shaking. I wanted to call the police, but I was scared he might hear me if I made any noise. I watched him from the edge of the window, trying to stay hidden. He was slowly making his way around the house, checking each window as he went. I decided to quietly make my way to the kitchen, where I grabbed the largest knife I could find. I wasn't sure what I was going to do with it, but having it made me feel a little safer. I crouched down near the back door, keeping my eyes on the man as he continued to circle the house. He stopped at the side gate, glanced around, and then walked back out, closing the gate behind him. I stayed there, knife in hand, for what felt like hours, afraid that he might come back. Eventually, I built up the courage to check all the doors and windows again, making sure everything was locked. I didn't sleep at all that night. I sat in the hallway with the knife, waiting, listening for any sound that might mean he'd return. When my parents got back the next morning, I told them everything. My dad was furious that I hadn't called the police, and in hindsight, I wish I had. We never found out who the man was or why he was there. It was just a random, terrifying experience that left me feeling vulnerable in a place I'd always felt safe. Even now, every little sound makes me jump, and I always double-check the locks before going to bed. I learned that night how quickly the feeling of safety can vanish, and how sometimes you can never really be sure who's watching from the other side of the window. I was 19 years old, home alone for the summer while my parents were away, visiting my grandmother in another state. It was the first time I'd been left in charge of the house for more than a weekend, and I was excited to have some freedom. My parents' house was in a quiet cul-de-sac on the outskirts of town, with the nearest neighbors a good hundred yards away. I spent most of my days working a part-time job, and in the evenings I'd relax on the porch with my laptop or read. One Friday night, I decided to take a late-night walk around the neighborhood. It was around 11 p.m., and the streets were empty, lit only by the occasional streetlight. I had my earbuds in, listening to music, when I noticed a car slowly driving down the street. I didn't think much of it at first, 
but the car passed by me twice in just a few minutes, moving unusually slowly. It was an older model, dark colored, with tinted windows. It was the kind of car you'd see every day, but something about the way it was creeping along made me uneasy. I decided to cut my walk short and headed back home. As I approached my driveway, I saw the car turn around at the end of the street and started heading back in my direction. I went inside quickly, locking the door behind me, and peeked out the window. The car slowed as it passed my house, almost coming to a stop in front of it before continuing down the road. I brushed it off as paranoia and tried to relax, but the strange encounter left me on edge. Later that night, I was sitting on the couch in the living room, binge-watching a show, when I heard a faint noise coming from outside. It was a soft tapping sound, like someone lightly knocking on a window. I paused the show and listened, but the noise stopped. I shrugged it off as the house settling, but it didn't sit right with me. A few minutes later, I heard it again, this time louder and more deliberate. It was coming from the back of the house, near the sliding glass door that led to the patio. I stood up, walked over quietly, and peeked through the curtain. My heart skipped a beat when I saw a figure standing just beyond the glass, partially obscured by the darkness. It was a man, dressed in dark clothing, his face hidden by the shadow. I backed away quickly, trying to stay out of sight. I grabbed my phone and called my neighbor, Mr. Jenkins, who lived across the street. He was an older man, but we'd known him for years and he always said to call if I ever felt unsafe. He picked up quickly, and I whispered that someone was in the backyard. He told me to stay put and that he'd come over to check things out. I waited in the hallway, peeking around the corner to keep an eye on the patio door. The man hadn't moved. He was just standing there, staring at the house. My heart was pounding, and I was trying to stay calm, hoping Mr. Jenkins would show up quickly. Suddenly, the figure stepped closer, pressing his face against the glass, as if trying to see inside. I held my breath praying he wouldn't see me. Just then, I saw the headlights of Mr. Jenkins' truck pulling into my driveway. The man in the backyard turned and bolted, disappearing into the darkness beyond the fence. I ran to the front door and let Mr. Jenkins in, explaining what had happened. He grabbed a flashlight from his truck and we both went out to check the backyard, but the man was gone. We inspected the patio area and found muddy footprints leading from the gate to the sliding door along with smudges on the glass where he'd pressed his hands and face. Mr. Jenkins stayed with me for a while, making sure the house was secure before he went back home. I was shaken but relieved that it seemed to be over. But just when I thought I could relax, I heard a noise coming from the side of the house, the sound of something scraping against the wall, like metal and brick. I peeked out the window and saw the same car from earlier, slowly creeping down the street again. It parked a few houses down, and the driver turned off the headlights. My heart was in my throat. I called Mr. Jenkins again, telling him about the car. He said he'd call the police and come back over. I watched from the window, terrified that the man would come back before help arrived. A few minutes later, the car's headlights flicked on, and it sped off down the street before Mr. Jenkins or the police could get there. The police took a report and patrolled the area, but they didn't find the car or the man. I stayed up the rest of the night, unable to sleep, replaying the whole thing in my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that the man had been watching me, planning something. I spent the rest of the week keeping every door locked and the blinds shut, jumping at every little noise. I never saw the car or the man again, but the experience left me paranoid about being alone, constantly on edge whenever I'm home by myself. It was a harsh reminder that sometimes danger doesn't come with a warning. It can be watching from the shadows, just waiting for the right moment. I'm 24 years old, living in a small apartment on the third floor of an older building in a quiet neighborhood. I moved here a year ago, and it's been pretty peaceful. One evening, I came home from work, planning to relax and catch up on some shows. As I was unlocking my door, I noticed the apartment across the hall had its door slightly open. It was odd because I rarely saw my neighbor an older man who mostly kept to himself. I pushed my door open and stepped inside, setting my keys on the counter. As I walked to the kitchen to grab a drink, I glanced back at the hallway and saw a faint shadow moving from under my door. I thought it might just be the hallway lights flickering, but something about it caught my attention. I hesitated then brushed it off, thinking maybe the older man was just checking his mail or something. 
I settled on the couch and turned on the TV trying to relax. After about an hour, I heard a faint shuffling noise coming from the hallway outside my apartment. It was subtle but distinct, like someone's shoes scuffing the floor. I muted the TV and listened closely, feeling a growing sense of unease. I went to the peephole and looked out. The hallway was empty, but my neighbor's door was still slightly open. I debated knocking on his door to check if he was okay, but decided against it. Instead, I locked my door, double-checked it, and went back to my spot on the couch, trying to ignore the uneasy feeling creeping over me. Around 11 p.m., I was getting ready for bed. I went to the bathroom to brush my teeth, and as I was washing up, I heard a faint tapping sound. It was coming from my bedroom window, which faced the back of the building where the fire escape was. My heart sank. I knew I hadn't left the window open, but it sounded like something or someone was tapping lightly on the glass. I slowly walked into my bedroom, keeping the light off to avoid drawing attention. As I got closer to the window, I saw a figure crouched on the fire escape, trying to peer inside. It was a man dressed in dark clothes, his face partially covered with a hood. I backed away quickly, heart racing, and grabbed my phone. I called my friend who lived a few blocks away, whispering what was happening. He told me to call the police immediately, but I hesitated, not wanting to make a scene if it was nothing. The tapping continued, more persistent now, and I could hear the faint sound of the window being nudged. I quickly went to the living room, locked myself in, and called the police. I watched the bedroom door, feeling trapped and terrified. The operator stayed on the line with me, reassuring me that officers were on their way. Minutes felt like hours as I waited, listening to the occasional tap on the window. Then, the noise stopped. I thought maybe the guy had given up, but I was too scared to check. Suddenly, I heard a loud thud against the bedroom window, followed by silence. The sound was sharp, like someone had hit the glass with something heavy. I stayed on the phone with the operator until I heard a knock at the door. It was the police. I let them in, explaining what had happened, and they went to check the bedroom. The window was still locked, but there were clear smudges on the glass where the man had been pressing against it. One of the officers went outside to check the fire escape, but found nothing. Whoever had been there was long gone. As the police were leaving, they mentioned that there had been recent reports of attempted break-ins in the neighborhood, mostly through fire escapes. They assured me they'd keep an eye on the area, but advised me to keep my windows locked and be vigilant. I thanked them, but I was still shaken. I didn't sleep much that night, every small noise making me jump. The next day, I called my landlord to ask if he could install better security on the windows. As he was inspecting the locks, he casually mentioned that the tenant across the hall had moved out a few days ago. My blood ran cold. That door had been open the entire time, and I realized that whoever was trying to get into my apartment could have easily been staying there, using it as a hiding spot. I never found out who the man was or why he was trying to get inside. I've since moved to a different apartment in a more secure building, but the memory of those faint taps on the window and the open door across the hall still haunts me. It was a harsh reminder that sometimes danger is closer than you think, just waiting for the right moment to strike. I'm 29 years old, living in a quiet, older apartment building on the third floor. It's a small place, just a one bedroom, but it's perfect for me. The apartment has a simple layout, a small kitchen, a living room that opens to a hallway, and my bedroom at the end. My building has thin walls so you can hear just about everything going on around you. I've gotten used to the sounds of footsteps from the apartment above, doors closing in the hall, and the occasional muffled conversation through the walls. I'm usually pretty good at ignoring these noises, but sometimes when it's late at night and everything is quiet, it gets to me. This particular night, I was home alone, sitting in my living room, watching a true crime documentary. I had the lights off, just the glow from the TV lighting up the room. My couch faces the TV and my back is to the hallway, so every now and then, I glance behind me, feeling uneasy. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, even though I knew it was just my mind playing tricks. After the documentary ended, I got up, brushed my teeth, and made sure to double lock the front door, a habit I've picked up living alone. I turned off all the lights and headed to bed. I was asleep for maybe an hour when I woke up to the sound of a light knock. It wasn't loud, just a soft, almost polite tap coming from somewhere in the apartment. I sat up in bed, 
my heart racing, trying to pinpoint where it came from. It didn't sound like it was coming from the door or the windows. It sounded closer, like it was coming from inside my apartment. I listened for a moment, but everything was silent again, so I tried to convince myself I was imagining things. Just as I was about to lie back down, I heard it again. Three soft knocks, this time more distinct, coming from the hallway. I got up, grabbing my phone as a makeshift flashlight, and slowly made my way to the hallway. I flicked on the light switch, illuminating the empty space. Everything looked normal, just the way I'd left it. But I couldn't shake the unease. I checked the front door. It was still locked. I peered through the peephole, but the hallway outside was empty and quiet. I took a deep breath, trying to calm my nerves, and went back to bed. I was lying there, staring at the ceiling, when I heard it again, the soft knocks. But this time they were coming from the wall that separates my apartment from the one next door. I thought maybe it was just my neighbor, but then I realized something that made my blood run cold. The apartment next door had been vacant for weeks, I knew this because I hadn't heard a single noise from that side since the last tenant moved out. I sat there frozen, listening to the faint rhythmic tapping that now seemed to move along the wall, like someone was lightly dragging their knuckles across it. I got out of bed, too scared to call out, and instead pressed my ear to the wall. I could hear faint breathing, slow and steady, like someone was right on the other side, listening back. I jumped back, my heart pounding and quickly went to my living room, turning on every light in the apartment. I tried to convince myself it was just the building settling or some kind of weird acoustic thing, but deep down, I knew it wasn't. I didn't sleep the rest of the night, just sat on my couch, waiting for the sun to come up. The knocking stopped after that, and in the morning, I called the building manager to ask if anyone had been in the apartment next door. He assured me it was still vacant, and no one had the keys except for him. Later that day, I noticed a small, old-looking key left on my kitchen counter. I had no idea where it came from, and I'd never seen it before. I checked every lock in my apartment, but the key didn't fit any of them. I ended up throwing it away, but I couldn't shake the feeling that someone had been inside my apartment, watching me, maybe even standing just on the other side of the wall that night. Now every night, I find myself listening closely, waiting for the soft knocks to return, and wondering who or what might be on the other side.